Francis Ford Coppola's latest film, Megalopolis, is hitting theaters this weekend. Fun fact, Megalopolis comes from a Latin root, meaning, what the hell is going on? This video is brought to you by The Perfect Gene. Go to theperfectgene.nyc and use the code DAN15 for a special offer. And stay tuned after the video for more info. Hello everybody, I'm Dan Merle here with my much anticipated by me review of Megalopolis from director Francis Ford Coppola. I went last night to see the Monday night IMAX experience, which is supposed to be like the premium fan full service experience. It was actually about three hours away, which is why this review is a little bit later than usual because I had to drive three hours there, three hours back, and I do sleep from time to time. And this IMAX experience came with some bells and whistles. Number one, it had the live theater element to the movie where somebody actually actually goes down in front of the screen and interacts with Adam Driver during the movie, although I thought that they were going to be actually saying something. It's a pre-recorded track. It's basically somebody pretending to be a reporter writing notes, and that's it. So that was a bit of a letdown. But it also had a live 30-minute Q&A before the movie that was carried from New York, which featured Francis Ford Coppola, Robert De Niro, and Spike Lee, and that was a show all on its own. First of all, the first 15 minutes of the Q&A were these three cinematic legends struggling to remember when they exactly met each other for the first time, which was really not interesting to watch, especially in a movie theater. And then the questions were just all over the place. It ended with the moderator asking all three of them if they were worried about the future of cinema, which I think is a good question, especially for those three. Uh, Robert De Niro's answer to that question was, can you imagine if Donald Trump directed this movie? So, you know. That was the basic tone and tenor of the Q&A. But that Q&A did have some insight into Francis Ford Coppola's philosophy behind making the film, what he was trying to achieve, the message he was trying to get across. And I have to say that it was a really admirable message. I understood the reasons why he wanted to make the film. Unfortunately, that clarity of vision didn't translate to the movie itself because Megalopolis is a big, beautiful, sloppy mess. Francis Ford Coppola likened Megalopolis to Apocalypse Now. He said when Apocalypse Now first came out, there were some people that loved it and some people that hated it. And that's the best response that you can get from a movie. And I agree with that general sentiment, the idea of making something that is provocative, that gets a reaction from an audience. I think that's a pretty good creative ethos to have. I would add two things. Number one, this movie is not Apocalypse Now. And number two, I think it's gonna have a lot more people hating it than loving it. Megalopolis takes place in New Rome, an American metropolis that is New York City in everything but name. Struggling to control New Rome are its mayor, Franklin Cicero, played by Giancarlo Esposito, who wants to maintain the status quo, and a visionary architect named Caesar Catalina, played by Adam Driver, who dreams of building a utopia that can meet all of humanity's needs, but does require the destruction of the current city. Caesar Catalina can also control time, but that's not an important part of the story. That's just Megalopolis for you. Also occupying New Rome are the mayor's daughter, Julia, played by Natalie Emanuel, who finds herself drawn to her father's biggest rival. A tabloid financial journalist named Wow Platinum, played by Aubrey Plaza, with energy I can only describe as screwball sinister. Caesar's cousin, Claudio, played by Shia LaBeouf, who thirsts for power but doesn't have the brains to back it up. Hamilton Crassus III, played by John Voight, the head of the city's most powerful bank. And Fundy Romain, Caesar's loyal driver and assistant, played by Lauren. Lawrence Fishburne, who also narrates the film. Francis Ford Coppola made some headlines before the movie came out, saying that he cast some actors who had been quote-unquote canceled, and people took that as a way of saying, well, he's taking you know one side or he's speaking out against this kind of the culture, but listening to his reasoning for making the film, he actually said that he cast those actors as well as actors that have political beliefs across the spectrum to present a vision of a humanity that could put aside the differences that we have right now and go boldly into the future. And that's another area with the concept of Megalopolis that I really like. It just doesn't really all translate into the final product. All of these performances are delivered at different energies and tones from the as always game for anything commitment of Adam Driver to the tongue-in-cheek almost parody style of Aubrey Plaza to whatever the hell John Voight 
is doing in this movie. Either his character is drunk in every scene, or he was really into character. I don't know. The worst fit is Natalie Emmanuel, who acts as if she's in a straight drama, but unfortunately stands out like a sore thumb among everybody else. Next to Driver, I'd say that Shia LaBeouf seems to understand the insanity of this movie the most, tapping into something almost primal. And I had a lot of fun with Aubrey Plaza's performance as she kind of hovers above everything and is just sort of doing her own thing. I know I've made the Stefan from SNL reference before in past videos, but more than any other movie that I can think of, Megalopolis deserves it. So let me say once again that Hollywood's hottest club is Megalopolis. It has everything. Falling satellites, Elvis impersonators, surprise Robin Hoods, Shia LaBeouf in a dress, multiple Grace Vanderwalls, invisible ropes, unexpected Hamlet, and a mumbly Rain Man. A mumbly Rain Man is that thing where like you cast Dustin Hoffman, but then he mumbles his lines like his character mumbles from Dick Tracy, and you can't understand a word that he says. Unfortunately, the one thing Megalopolis doesn't have is any sort of narrative cohesion. It does feel like a work of art in that it's so abstract that it feels like it should be projected on the wall of the Museum of Modern Art and not on a movie screen. I'm sure Francis Ford Coppola could sit you down and take you through the movie scene by scene and tell you what he was thinking when he made it or when he wrote it, but that context is not clear and really not even in the film itself. His messages are either obvious and repeated often or completely impenetrable to anyone other than Francis Ford Coppola. Scenes begin and end randomly, characters are introduced and then forgotten about, and there's some stuff that just seems to happen for no reason, like a 10 minute long subplot about a virgin and deep fake AI porn. And I'm not making any of that up. I'm not saying that Coppola didn't know what he was doing. I'm saying that he did a bad job of letting us know what he was doing. It was like he was carrying the script for Megalopolis to the set on the first day of shooting, and it was a really windy day, and the wind like picked up the script, and the pages went everywhere, and he just sort of grabbed the pages as he could and stuffed them back in a pile and said, okay, you know what? Let's just shoot what we've got, and we'll fill in the gaps. Now, there's absolutely room for abstract art in the movie world, but Coppola spent over $100 million making this movie, and then expected a distributor to pay an equal amount of money to market it, which didn't happen. He's also fronting the marketing costs, all of it bankrolled by the sale of his winery. Now, money isn't everything in movies or in art, but I'm genuinely confused as to how he thought he would convince somebody to give him $100 million to market this film, because any distributor or any studio that would have invested that kind of money in this film would have been subject to investigation by other stakeholders in the studio, and the person who made that decision would have been immediately fired because this movie, at this cost, I'm sorry, is guaranteed to be a huge financial loser. That's not a criticism, I think that's just a fact. Megalopolis is a movie that will test the patience of even the most devoted cinephiles. And for the person on the street that might not know that much about the movie and is just buying a ticket to the latest film that Adam Driver is in, this will probably almost feel like some kind of a psychological experiment or an endurance test to see how far the average moviegoer's limits can be pushed. It is anti-commercial, which again, isn't wrong in and of itself, but when you as a filmmaker put so much into the movie and then ask so much from others in order to get the movie released, you have to at least have some eye on the commercial viability of it. Now, one thing I can't argue with is the look of the film. It's a beautiful movie with lush cinematography from Mihai Malamere Jr., who also shot Jojo Rabbit, The Harder They Fall, The Master, and first collaborated with Coppola on 2007's Youth Without Youth. The visual effects are also well-designed, giving the film a dreamlike quality that blends the real and the futuristic, I never doubted the feel of Megalopolis, and it may be the most technically impressive film that Coppola has ever made, which only makes its narrative shortcomings more obvious. This movie is like a happening era M. Night Shyamalan script as directed by James Cameron. I think you can, and I do, admire Megalopolis and dislike it at the same time. It does demonstrate a stunning, ambitious vision of the future. It does feature a cast that is largely committed to that vision and unafraid of having their performances judged as good or bad. Their sole concern is to inhabit the characters as written in the world as written, and that is brave of them as actors in their profession. And I also respect the fact that Francis Ford Coppola had a creative vision and was so uncompromising that he put his own capital on the line in order to achieve that. You don't see that 
kind of bravery in the directing profession from many people these days. At the same time, Megalopolis is sloppily constructed and unfocused. It lacks the finesse and tight grasp on narrative that Coppola's best films have. This isn't a meditation like Apocalypse Now, nor is it an intricate puzzle box like many of David Lynch's films. This is a mishmash of ideas that come from decades of development on Coppola's part. The cast's devotion to those ideas is impressive, but their performances are often completely out of place, dissonant with each other. There are a lot of laughs in Megalopolis, but I'd say the majority of them are not intentional. They are the byproduct of a creator whose vision has gotten completely away from him. I admire what Coppola set out to do. I admire his tenacity, but I do not admire the final product that we see with Megalopolis. And if his intention as a director was to make a film that provokes a reaction, then I think that Megalopolis is an unquestioned success because my feelings notwithstanding, there are going to be people that hail this movie as a masterpiece and there are also gonna be people that hail this as maybe the worst case in recent history of a director whose unchecked ego and creativity got the best of him. Now where you fall on that spectrum is up to you. This movie is almost impossible to categorize when it comes to my personal rating scale, so I will give you the following advisories. See it now if you want an example of unbridled, unchecked vision from one of Hollywood's most legendary filmmakers. It's good if you're looking for some absolutely gonzo moments and performances from a talented cast. It's fine as a social and political commentary with a few strong scenes that are very effective. I'm not a fan of the movie as a whole, which is far too uneven and disjointed to recommend personally, and stay away if you think you're in for anything approaching a conventional narrative or a movie that delivers on its themes and approaches consistently. So those are my scattered thoughts on Megalopolis, almost as scattered as the movie itself. What do you think? Will you still be showing up to see it in theaters? Are you hoping you get one of those IMAX screens where a guy goes down in front in the middle of the movie? Let me know down in the comments below. And before we go, I wanna thank the sponsor for this video, The Perfect Gene. September means football season for a lot of people, but for me, that means it's blue jean season. Well, every season is blue jean season for me, but it's definitely the time of year to break out those long pants and get ready for cooler temperatures. If you're looking for that perfect pair of jeans, I have the perfect solution, the perfect jean. It's right there in the name. These are the most comfortable jeans I've ever worn, and I've worn a lot of jeans over the years. And it doesn't matter what size you are, the perfect jean has a massive range of sizes and fits, so you will absolutely find the pair that's perfect for you. I've had a couple of those transition days where it's warmer during the day and cooler at night, and my jeans work great in both conditions, breathable and flexible in the sun, but thick enough to keep me warm at night. When laundry day rolls around, my pair of perfect jeans is always the first one I grab. It's finally time to stop putting up with uncomfortable jeans by going to theperfectjean.nyc. Our listeners get 15% off your first order, including free shipping, free returns, and free exchanges when you use code DAN15 at checkout. That's 15% off for new customers at theperfectjean.nyc with promo code DAN15. After you purchase, they're going to ask you where you heard about them, so please support the show and tell them that I sent you F your khakis and get the perfect gene. Thanks to The Perfect Gene for sponsoring this video and thank you for watching. Be sure to stay tuned right here for more movie news, reviews, box office, and more. Until next time, stay safe and I'll see you then. Bye.